This is Synergy, a combination flipper hammersaw combat robot designed for the Australian Open Combat Antwit class. Even before competing with my first robot in the class, I knew I wanted to eventually make more complex and unique bots, one of which being an underside attack robot. The standard way of going about achieving a unique attack angle is a hammer of some sort that swings overhead to strike into the less armoured tops of robots. This is culminated in a recent explosion in the numbers of hammer saws, which pin opponents before spinning up a blade to be swung overhead, delivering a devastating shot to internal components. While top armour is usually neglected in many bots, there still exists the challenge of striking in the right place and dodging around the opponent's weapon assembly and unique geometry, since the relatively fragile hammer arm can't take much damage itself, meaning that, in extreme cases such as against overhead spinners or shell spinners, there may never be an opening to attack in an entire match. Therefore, even better than attacking from above is striking from beneath. Bottom plates are similarly not very thick or well armoured, are almost always uniform wide flat areas regardless of the opponent's design and because your wheels need to touch the ground to move there isn't as much room to put dedicated armor even if you wanted. This set of benefits held much appeal to me although these advantages seemed underutilized with Seth Schaefer's shrapnel mine being one of the only examples of a similar attack style I could find. I considered various methods of actually attacking the underside including heated spikes that rise up to impale my opponent. Finally though, I realized that instead of literally attacking from below, I could simply make use of two well-established weapon types, a hammer saw and a flipper, to flip my opponent over, thus making the bottom, now the top, and then acting as a regular overhead attack bot from there. The issue here is that on top of drive systems, hammer saws are unique in having two weapon actuators where a standard bot has one and adding a third in the form of a flipper brings us to a final count of five motors as opposed to the normal two or three, all while remaining under the unforgiving ant weight limit of 150 grams. In fact, the first version I ever made never even made weight. It featured a lot of design issues as my experience of only ever building a big horizontal spinner didn't translate well to designing a control bot. I did, however, get just close enough to making weight that I thought with a complete redesign I could get this to work. To kick off the redesign, it was wise to reconsider my choices of components. I like to think of the weight limit as a budget. With this in mind, the overarching concern for Synergy is being as budget friendly as possible. Instead of using the same 3450kV 1804 weapon motors as Yellow and Dangerous, I went with the much smaller, lighter and faster 4600kV 1404s which had been used in other hammer saws like Subdivide of Broken Link Robotics. Swapping the standard N20 motors for drive for the high quality Wranglebox N10s I'd used with success in Yellow Mark II was another no-brainer, being more powerful and 4 grams lighter for the pair of them. Using more Wranglebox N10s with a higher reduction for the torque required to drive the arms would bring similar benefits over N20s there. Finally, the Lima Forge all-in-one board eliminated the need for a separate receiver and three of the four brushed motor outputs, stacking a DF Robot brushed ESC from Yellow Mark 1 and a regular 20 amp brushless ESC on top of the board gave me the remaining speed controllers required and brought the electronic stack to roughly the same size as the Lima Forge battery I'd be using. I also used the same small bot bit switches as in previous bots. As usual, setting out some parameters or goals is a good idea before leaping into design. Obviously the big ones are staying within 150 grams and having both a hammer saw and flipper mechanism, although there are some variety within flipper designs. I was recommended a front hinge flipper as they're effective at ensuring flips over lifts and also let the flipper itself serve as top armor. However, I didn't like the fact that I'd need to get well underneath my opponent to effectively flip them, while potentially letting my exposed hammer arm and gears get damaged. So, the flipper would be similar to other rear hinged lifters instead. 
Four-wheel drive was another goal to be the most effective control bot possible, as I'd found success with the system previously. And finally, being able to take hits with sufficient armor to stand up to the punishing competition was naturally a desirable goal to strive for. One of the areas for improvement over Mark 1 was packing the electronics tighter. The more volume I need to put armor around, the more weight is wasted. Messing around with laying out the components, I settled on this. From here, I chucked the components into Fusion, laid them out accordingly, and got to modeling the barest chassis possible to just hold the electronics. From there, adding armor and fork mount points, as well as separately modeling cast polyurethane wheels and weapon systems, before bringing them into the model, got me most of the way to a finished product. Using the properties function to estimate the weight of machine components and printing the chassis set me on track for having 24 grams left for forks, bolts, top plates and a set of wheels. Some unique things in the design that couldn't be 3D printed that I'd like to point out are the mounts for the two weapon arms and the spinner assembly. Where Synergy Mark I had an aluminium standoff with bolts holding printed spaces as an axle for both the flipper and hammer arms, the new design with the rear hinge flipper required two axles. Taking shaft collars from larger brushless motors I'd used in another project provided a lightweight way to keep custom arm axles, which were designed to be turned from mild steel in a lathe, from backing out, all while having a low profile head so as not to interfere with the other arm's movement. Weapons in this weight class are generally JB welded to the motor can with some additional hopes and dreams to hold it. This is what is used on my own horizontal spinner and other bots and is generally fine since physics seems to apply very loosely at this scale of design. However, as the thickness of the blade and diameter of the motor decrease, there is less and less surface area to bond. This can culminate in having weapons not to skew or simply come off in large hits. In addition to this, I wanted to be able to substitute different blade designs in future, like saws or thin slicing teeth, for more options against different materials. As such, I found that implementing a hub design gave me more surface area for the JB Weld to bond and the ability to swap out different weapon styles. In order to have the strength required to stand up to impacts and to keep the weight of the system equivalent to just having a steel weapon mount directly to the can, I spec the hubs to be 7075 aluminium. This is where I'd like to introduce PCBWay. PCBWay is a manufacturing service, and here they are providing the CNC machined 7075 aluminium hubs. While ordering, I also added in their anodizing option for some flair. They arrive nicely finished in blue and orange and fit on the motors perfectly, although I forgot to specify tighter tolerances on the bits that needed to fit together and also left the threads to be tapped by myself. With most of the parts made, I then had to wrestle with the wiring. Ah, oh, the wiring. This might be the most painful part of the bot. The five motors each receiving unique instructions meant I was using every pin on the llama board, and some were used twice. Couple that with how tightly everything is packed, and it's a wonder the thing even worked at all. Every wire was measured to make sure it took up only as much space and weight as needed, plus a bit extra for room to move during combat. Also, the battery plug passes underneath the center arm upright, and I have to use tweezers to unplug it. Once that was all done, bolting on the armor and forks as well as attaching weapon arms left me with a bot that was perfectly on the weight limit. Except, I didn't have a top plate. Oh, that's where the weight went. In a desperate final attempt, I spent a very late night reprinting what I could with slightly lighter settings and removed four bolts altogether by printing the flipper arm and forks as a single piece, leaving just enough weight for 2mm ABS lids to just keep everything inside the bot. Not the most combat resilient material ever, but it'll do. In testing, the arm gears had a tendency to skip. The hammer arm was more sluggish than I'd hoped and the flipper only had enough torque to flip in the most ideal of circumstances. But, nothing to be done about that, the day of the event was now upon us. With roughly three hours of sleep, interrupted by alarms to start more prints, 
I woke at 4.30 to take the train to the event. The event in question was another WRC one, although this time held at the Convoy for Kids fundraiser in the Hawkesbury. Although the structure of three round robin fights, followed by playoffs of the top eight, remained the same, the presence of spectators meant the match schedule would be less flexible than usual. I also brought YND to this event, although its performance will be in a later video. Passing safety and weigh-ins, our first opponent was Mr. Obvious, an angled overhead bar spinner. This was actually the fight I was most hoping for, as it is a perfect counter to standard hamsaws, and has previously survived entire matches against Subdivide without a single strike being landed for fear of the hammer system being obliterated. This is basically the ideal matchup to prove the effectiveness of my weapon combo. I chased them around for a while, and the complexity of operating three weapon motors, in addition to the driving nuance required for control bots, threw me off. I managed to flip them over and wrestled with the controls while they tried to self right and carved right through their underbelly, after which they promptly tapped out. In hindsight, I should have given them a moment to tap out before I swung, but in the sleep-deprived moment of the thing actually working, I got carried away. Thankfully, no damage was done to their internals, although I was given the chassis as a trophy at the conclusion of the event. Second was Dead Cat Bounce. This is a new bot from Angus of Maker's Muse, and has a massive vertical spinner, and didn't seem to like staying flipped over for long. Well, that went better than I could have reasonably hoped for. A foreseeable loss, mainly due to my inexperience driving something that doesn't immediately send my opponent flying, and the ineffectiveness of my flipper forks, since only one was resting on the ground. The massive hit to my rear shattered the top plate as expected, and cleanly detached my drive motor from the rest of the wiring. Luckily, this was a simple repair, so not too bad overall. For our third and final qualifier, I was drawn against Hexwitch, another Hammersaw. Given I'd also followed the trend of armouring my sides, and only had 2mm of brittle ABS on top, an overhead attack posed quite the danger, and given the pain I'd gone through to wire this thing up in the first place, I figured the only way to survive this was to strike first and strike fast. Two, one, go! Oh, that is deep. Hey, can you separate? No. No. Alright, All right, pause uh, put, the fight. Put your, hang on. Just do not move. <laughs> oh, close to the battery. Oh. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Don't move yet. Alright, we'll restart this fight in three, two, one, go! Uh, the TPU arm is protecting him. 
Yeah, it's doing a good job. Oh, it's gonna self-right though. Alright, can you separate or are you guys stuck again? <laughs> Alright. Synergy, can you self-right? I'm gonna count you out. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, uh, one. Pretty sniffing. That's it, next switch wins. Well, that was a bit silly. I did manage to get the first hit, which did carve through both 1mm panels of polycarb, although the amount of empty space within head switch meant there was nothing important to hit there. Following that, I got inverted up against the kick plate, where the gears skipping, in addition to not knowing how to control the arms very well, meant I was counted out. Going into the quarterfinals, up against head switch once again, I did some testing to figure out how to control both arms at once to help get past the gear skipping and flip back over reliably. Other than that, same strategy as before. Oops, not the best way to go out, and kind of surprising. I tried to get the first hit again, but whiffed and embedded myself in the floor. This unfortunately knocked me out of the bracket, although in future, programming the ESC to be bidirectional should let me spin backwards out of these situations. All in all, Synergy rounds out the event with a 1 and 3 record. More importantly though, I'd proven the concept had benefits over a traditional hammer saw, and there are some clear areas for improvement which are mostly easy fixes. Other than some design changes, my main issue is controlling the dang thing, so some more driving practice is needed. I've since had a Mark 2.5 implementing these changes, competed at UNSW's Robot Royale, and have plans for a Mark 3. Updates for that and other things are on the way, so thanks and see you then.